Um, in this uh, fiscal year long, which for us was uh, July 1st, uh, 2012 to uh, uh, June, until the, I'm sorry, for the 12, 13, yeah, from July to June of this year, our um, expenditures, our combined expenditures of water and power will be three point, will exceed $3.2 billion. So, and that's just the direct monies that we spend. So we are larger than, you know, the, our budgets are really, really larger than many um, municipalities. Um, and for that $3.2 billion that we spend, we, um, as a result of that, we create more than 26,000 jobs. Uh, those are both direct and indirect jobs. 9,200 9, of those are direct, so those are the people who actually are DWP employees. And the remaining 16,000 or so are um, as a result of our vendors and our contractors in the region and Southern California. You know, we are focusing on the uh, five county area. And these numbers were um, uh, produced and developed through a study that we recently commissioned by the LADC which we hope to uh, release very shortly. Our expenditures not only create jobs in this uh, community, but it uh, provides uh, local revenues uh, for the state and for uh, our country. $330 million in state and local taxes and, and more than $500 million in federal tax revenues. So again, we are uh, a large player in this, in this uh, region. Um, but to talk more about our role in uh, preparing the next workforce, I mean, if people ask us why, you know, why must we do this? Not only must we do it to meet our um, energy efficiency and renewable mandates, just to make sure we have the workforce, uh, the highly skilled workforce that's needed, but we are facing um, a huge aging of our existing workforce. Uh, as you can see here, 20% of our workforce will be eligible to retire in the next five years. Um, and in this past year, we have seen record numbers of, re of uh, retirees leaving the department. Um, and so we have to prepare for that. 40% of our workforce are 50 years and older. Um, you know, I like I said, I've been at the department for it'll be two years in September. And when I walk through the hall and I, I'm talking to my colleagues, you know, everyone I run into has been there for 20 years. Uh, you know, and I'm just you know, they look at me, they're like, oh. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I will never retire from the Department of Foreign Power. Um, but most of them do. They you know, they start at 18 and 20, and they work 25, 30 plus years. And so we must uh, prepare for that. And, we're doing that in a number of ways. And it's not, you know, the work that we do as a utility is highly technical uh, and requires highly skilled workforce. So it takes time to train um, that, that workforce. And we can't just go open the doors and, hopefully that they, and hope that they will be there. We have to take an active role in making sure that that workforce is there. And that requires us to do a, a great deal of planning. Um, the training is intense. It's rigorous. Um, many of the training courses we see um, have high attrition rates. I mean, everyone says, oh, I, I want to work with the utility. Um, I just not do what they, you know, does. You know, I, I sit at my desk and think of policy or whatever, but the training that um, she talks about and that we require that the bulk of our workers do, um, the classes we see a 50% drop already in, uh, in, in those training classes. And so we have to make sure we are um, training as many people and touching as many people as possible. Uh, we're very excited about a recent program that we launched um, in, in uh, 2010, and it was in partnership with um, IBEW Local 18. And we, uh, it is called the Utility Pre-Path Training Program. Many of you may um, know about it. Uh, it's an exempt class. It's really an apprenticeship uh, uh, program. Uh, LEDWP, uh, we were not immune to the financial uh, problems that the rest of the region and the rest of the country is facing. The city uh, of Los Angeles had to do layoffs, and we were fortunate that we did not have to do layoffs, but we are not hiring, so that we have been on a hiring freeze. But though we are on a hiring freeze, we still know that eventually uh, things are going to change around and we're going to need um, those. And so while we couldn't hire, uh, we're not hiring people directly, we can be the next uh, generation by doing this training program and they can when we are ready to uh, open the doors and hire new people they will be trained uh, to do so and so we collaborated with um, local 18 and developed the program it's an 18 month on the job training program so it's fairly extensive um, this is not you go in and two months later that you're, you're going to be ready uh, to work on this uh, we work with LA trade uh, technical college uh, to do that as well and the program is open to um, residents of Los Angeles County. The curriculum was developed um, in conjunction with the Joint Training Institute. 
um, just a little bit. I won't go through uh, all of this in great detail, but it's you know it's 57 training courses. Again, I mentioned that we are partnered with uh, Trade Technical College to do it. There's on-the-job training, and uh, there's also computer uh, training as well. The areas are uh, what you would find um, in many of the training programs. It's it's electricity, it's safety, uh, testing, and a number of other areas. And our Employees are involved in, in this uh, training along with our, our partners at uh, Local 18. Um, how we um, started the program was, uh, or the, the first work that was being done is through our energy efficiency. So again, uh, Neil mentioned um, the recent legislation that requires uh, AB 32, which requires utilities, in, including uh, DWP, to reach a renewable goal of 35%. 30, 35% by 2030, by 2030, and we were on we were on target to do that. So our goal right now is, uh, in this past year or probably two weeks ago, our board increased our energy efficiency budget more than uh, doubled it. Um, last year we spent 55 million dollars um, in energy efficiency. Um, next year's budget will um, has been well once it's approved by the city council. Not it, will, it will allow for 128 million um, to go in energy efficiency, and so uh, some of the work that's going to be done is where we would like to see our UPCC, UPCT trainers or trainees um, participate in. So the first uh, class of trainees were hired in uh, 2011, and it was a class of 35. Uh, they participated in our 8.5 million dollar. Um, our grant uh, funded program and so it was funded by the uh, federal government and those funds um, have uh, been expended however we will um, continue the program through funds of our own and so that was why it was really important for us to have our um, energy efficiency budget increase so that we can continue the work that we do um, with our trainees um, some of the areas that we hope to uh, continue to use uh, our trainees in is in energy efficiency uh, direct um, uh, smart small business direct install so they will be trained they will be trained to um, go out into these small businesses and, and do the energy audits and so forth solar installation um, and then the smart grid we uh, the department was a recipient of a 60 million dollar uh, grant from the department of energy uh, to work on uh, DOE and so part of the rollout of that program uh, we hope to use our trainees uh, to help us with that as well and then water conservation and recycling so these are just a few of the programs that we hope um, to use our trainees um, to give them the experience that they need so that as our um, employees are retiring and we open up our doors to hire new people that we that we will have a workforce uh, that's trained and ready to start and hit the ground running. So um, the first class was 35 people. We hope to grow that to upwards of 85 people uh, over the next year. So um, they're small numbers, but um, still significant and um, we look to continue. In addition to um, the work that we're doing with the um, to prepare people to come work for the department eventually, we um, have started a program called First Source Hiring. And, and this is a, a, a workforce uh, development program, and it really is partnering with our vendors and contractors. So I mentioned you know, earlier in my presentation that we have 9,000 um, employees, about 9,000 direct employees. But again, there's, you know, more than 16,000 in just this year alone that we're responsible for um, through our vendors and contractors. And so um, when I started, I thought, you know, there's, there has to be a way that we can leverage the relationship with our vendors and contractors to the benefit of LA County residents. Um, we all know the unemployment rate is extremely high, higher than the national average here. And so we worked with uh, the city family and with our vendors uh, to implement this first source hiring program, which essentially says, that um, right now it's uh, the first year, it's a pilot program, so it's limited to our professional service contractors. But our goal and our intention is to expand this for all um, contractors with the Department of Water Power. So if you are a vendor or a contractor with the department, you come in, you get the you win the bid, um, and you're going to start work. And you say, you know, I have you know five employees, but in order to staff this uh, contract, I'm going to need an additional 10 or 20 people. Then um, you are required to give the department. Uh, a 10-day notice and so you give us the first opportunity to source those employees for you to make sure that they come from Los Angeles County so they are required to give us 10-day notice 
Um, we are working with a, a private company called Agile One. They do a similar, they manage a similar program out of Lawa. We work with, so we work with Agile One, our local workforce centers. Uh, we'll be working with uh, uh, Trade Tech and others to develop a database of employees or potential employees. And this is, like I said, it's for professional services now, but hopefully our goal is we'll include our construction projects and others. And so we will have a database of the contractors will then come to us and say, these are the jobs that I need to fill. They, we will then have 10 days to source those uh, potential employees for them, make sure that they meet all the criteria, screen them for them, and pass them on. They are not, vendors are not required to hire them, but they are required to let us know why they're not hiring. So they just can't say, oh no, we're just going to go monster.com we're going to just hire you know our friends and family that have been waiting but um, we really want them to stress that if you're going to be working with the department um, we want the, our vendors to do their part in hiring and putting local residents on to work so we're very excited about um, this program and again it's an online it doesn't cost the contractors anything they do it online we have uh, like I said we have a, a private company Agile One which is associated uh, with you know, a much larger uh, uh, human resource hiring uh, service, and so they have a large database, and so we don't have uh, we don't have any questions that they will be able to fulfill um, that requirement. And so that's a little bit about first source hiring. Um, the other way that we work uh, in our uh, region to support uh, new green jobs is through the support of the clean tech ecosystem here in Los Angeles. And Ian Harris and uh, Robert here will talk a little bit about that uh, ecosystem and how DWP supports those efforts. But it's really, um, we do see ourselves um, as a catalyst for this work. And so if we can um, be a partner to new clean tech companies and to the ecosystem to, you know, to show that listen, we're going to be buying and we're going to and using the technologies that we need and we can give signals to the private sector to um, as they're developing their product, uh, these are the things that we're going to um, be looking for, then that's, we believe that then spurs opportunities and new green jobs. And um, we've been working very closely with the Clean Tech Incubator and others um, to kind of send those signals and to establish those partnerships. And we're very excited about the work that the incubator and others are doing, and we're excited to um, be a part of that. I uh, serve on the executive board of the incubator. And so um, we work very hard to bring um, the incubator staff and their uh, portfolio companies into DWP. Um, so that they can talk to our engineers, talk to our buyers, um, and hopefully uh, the things that they are um, developing and creating we can use to help meet our uh, renewable goals and our energy efficiency goals. And so that's a little bit about what we do. Uh,